is a, is a serious issue, uh, mainly because uh, plastic is, is a preferred item. The demand is high for, for plastics. And so even as you tell people not to use plastics, they, they want it. And that, that makes the, the whole problem to be very serious. Uh, however, <coughs> uh, you realize that uh, it has many uses in primary packaging. Uh, people want to use it for culling things from one place to another. But when we finish with the plastic, what, what do we do with it? You realize that uh, if, if you look at, uh, in terms of proportions, we, it is one of the, the waste streams that, that has really been increasing. Uh, of course, we know that the, the scenario is changing because of uh, uh, the investors know that the plastics will not be there, will not be there for long. And for that reason, uh, now the, the, the volumes, uh, the, the, the rate of increase is, is not as high. Mm. And of course, we have put in measures as, as government to do that. But mm. the problem still remains serious, mainly because the plastic is long lasting, it, it can last for uh, hundreds of years and then uh, when people don't know what to do with it they burn it <laughs> and when you burn it uh, it releases toxic fumes mm -hmm. which are harmful to human beings some of them are carcinogenic when it gets into our bo water bodies it blocks mm -hmm. the, the rivers so that the river can spill over it can even flow back to where people are and uh, flood all spaces so uh, those are some of the challenges, including mm -hmm. some of them contain water, they hold water, the, the, the water st st stands there and uh, then mosquitoes come and breed there and the, 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 it causes uh, disease causing organisms, mm -hmm. including rats. Rats would find a good home where there are plastics because the, the, the place is not as wet as, mm -hmm. as other places. So the, 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 the plastic challenge is, is major, uh, mainly because of the, the lifetime of plastics is, mm -hmm. is quite quite long. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I come to you, Dr. Cyril. And uh, when you talk about plastics, are uh, from the eye of uh, the global standpoint coming from EU NEP. I know even when we were celebrating the World Environment Day, the big question was ending plastic use. Now, um, from where you sit, just how many tons of plastics do we keep talking about on a say on a, on a, on an annual basis, and how is that being viewed from an international perspective? Uh, thank you very much uh, for, your, for your question and thank you for inviting us. Um, I think that uh, globally the quantity of plastic that is uh, released in the environment, it's, uh, it's really used. Um, when it come to Kenya, the, the numbers was around 3 uh, billion tons in Kenya being released. Uh, this is the numbers of 2020 from uh, after three years after we have buying the single use uh, carrier bags in, uh, uh, in Kenya, which is, uh, which is huge actually. But let me from the three planetary crises, let me uh, perhaps uh, bring the answer through that angle. And uh, one of the figures that we have to keep in mind is if nothing is done actually, and things got that, uh, I mean, the member state decided actually to, to take very seriously the issues of plastic pollution by, um, by uh, opening the conversation for, uh, for the back of for the ban of plastic to become uh, global. So um, if we only take to the angle of the uh, nature losses, mm -hmm. by 2050 we have more plastic particles or more plastic bags into the oceans, more plastic bottles and plastic content in the ocean than fish. This gives us a magnitude of the problem, which is actually uh, very huge. Just let me also give you another figures. Um, in 2019 and 20, uh, 2020 figures, uh, 5,000 uh, premature debt in Kenya uh, has been uh, attributed to, uh, to the pollution, which is uh, extremely a very huge number. This means that uh, it's, a time to, uh, it's a time to call, off, uh, to call for actions. 
Um, when the, the member state agreed that, uh, that the theme for the last uh, World Environment Day being to end plastic pollution, it also speaks to the magnitude of the problem uh, mm -hmm. globally. So uh, plastic, of course, for since uh, 1960, for example, when this was introduced in Kenya, it has been for some time, you know, um, useful because it's light, because it's also make our life some, somehow easy. But we realize, as Dr. Ayub just said, that plastic lasts more than 100 years in the environment, meaning that some of the plastic that has been used in 1960 is still actually lay in our environment. And since the ban, and what mm -hmm. we can do is that, what we can say, and we can all observe that mm -hmm. uh, the city of Nairobi and many cities in Kenya uh, are now many uh, really clean vis-a-vis uh, -vis of the pollution. We used to see these um, unfortunate scenarios or scenarios where from the airport driving to, uh, to other places of, uh, of Nairobi, we will experience, uh, you know, plastic hanging in the trees and so on. And now we can all witness that, uh, that some, some great effort has been made. And this is also a call for the civil society, call for all the actors to continue the enforcement of plastic. The last one that I must say is that, um, what does that mean actually to ban uh, to ban the plastic as a whole. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Nairobi, which is a word of uh, environment conversation, mm -hmm has asked actually the intergovernmental uh, intergovernmental negotiation committee, the number three, to uh, to discuss the what would be what would that convention on plastic, what would that ban of plastic look like? And uh, Nairobi, as usual, has welcomed more than 3,000 uh, people from different capital across the world to have that conversation. And we really look forward to the next uh, INC, which would be us by Canada, to really look now into the text of that convention. Mm -hmm. And we hope that the text will be as uh, binding as possible so that we really uh, get rid of the plastic. Because globally, that doesn't really look good. Mm -hmm. Recently, we have had few rents these days, and you could see, just to emphasize on what uh, Dr. you just said, we could see that uh, we are having a lot of plastic bottles on the drainages because of lack of uh, proper disposal, lack of, uh, uh, I mean, the three reuse, you know, recycle, and then uh, eventually, uh, I mean, repair. Mm -hmm. So the message today is, let us have uh, the same conversation on how to phase out this uh, plastic mm -hmm. and we are happy to attend this conversation. And I come to you Teddy and uh, the past few years we've seen the government really going hard on in making sure that um, phasing out or getting rid of plastic is, is, is its main agenda and we've seen the private sector also jumping on this and as we talk about uh, the ban of plastics uh, in uh, um, in the country and the world and even in africa let's talk about nairobi to be specific how are non-state actors together with other bodies working together to end plastic use thank you very much um i represent a community and probably it's uh, it's the largest community in uh, in east africa that is near estate um, three years ago, we started on a journey to fight plastic. Uh, that is basically augmenting the government's efforts and what we can do as residents as well. Because at the end of the day, we generate these plastics. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we are the users and the final consumers. So a model was created uh, thanks to our partners. And uh, we started with a pilot phase. Uh, just uh, now is about 5,000 units of housing. Um, we did about 30% of that and it was, it was a huge success. Then we immediately scaled it up. And uh, in two th 2001, yeah, sorry, 2021, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, during the NMS time, we even got an award on uh, the first uh, circular economy zone, matters plastic. Mm -hmm. So we got a challenge, what can we do? Because at the end of the day, yes, we, we, we as a small community within Nairobi, we've actually managed to, to tame plastic, not 100%, of course, there are challenges with that. But what can we do to actually scale this up? And uh, we, we, we thought, why not reach out to our neighbors and uh, find out what can we do? And mm -hmm. as we speak today, uh, combined Nyayo and uh, the surrounding, and uh, that is uh, Tasia and the, mm -hmm. basically the eastern side of Nairobi, we've managed to collect over 18,000 kilograms of plastics, mm -hmm. which we can actually trace to a specific recycler. Mm -hmm. You know, so what, how do we do it? Uh, the question sometimes I think the, the, the wording's a bit too, 
too huge mm -hmm. to, 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 to say it. Because a, a normal resident will not understand what is circular economy, mm -hmm. what is beating plastic and all these kind of things. So we really wanted to synthesize this and make it as simple as possible mm -hmm. to, a, to a standard resident mm -hmm. in Nairobi. And uh, we've been saying it is possible because we've done 18,000 uh, kilograms. Mm -hmm. So it can be scaled up across Nairobi. And um, the simple solution is very simple, segregation at source. Mm -hmm. uh, in your kitchen, dedicate a small container or a carton box. Plastic does not smell, does not rot. Mm -hmm. Place it there in that, co in that mm -hmm. container. Make it a children play game. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've done. Uh, so that children win an award uh, depending on how many kilos mm -hmm. they can generate. You know. And then of course work together with the recycler for collection. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing at this juncture? That is what we've done in the last mm -hmm. three years. Mm -hmm. uh, going forward, uh, we are in the process of ins uh, inception of a, a wider Nairobi alliance that is going to bring this to perspective mm -hmm. and ensure every single corner of Nairobi is actually mm -hmm. taken care of. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are working on. Mm -hmm. And let me come back to uh, Dr. Ayub. And uh, now he's talking about what uh, they have been doing as a community. But now let's talk about what the government is doing on this and how and what is the government doing in making sure that the fight on plastics is actually won with regard to several pacts and agreements that are in place. You know, Kenya <coughs> pronounce itself uh, loudly mm -hmm. that uh, we are serious on uh, matters plastic pollution, uh, whereby back in 2007, we started engaging with the private sector through uh, what we call excise duty for plastics that are coming into the country and they were slapped with a uh, with duty. But we realized that the plastic was, uh, people were willing to pay that money mm -hmm. and continue using plastics. Mm -hmm. So it was not helping mm -hmm. the environment. And so in 2017, uh, the Minister for Environment banned the, the polythene bag. Mm -hmm. And I think that set the momentum for more, uh, more work on plastics. Since uh, after 2017, after the ban, of course, NEMA has been uh, uh, enforcing that law. <coughs> we have not succeeded. Uh, we are at 80%. And our analysis of our performance, uh, we have expanded the enforcement team uh, so that because we hear that we still have those bugs in the markets, mm -hmm. the mama bogas and baba, baba bogas. Eh? They, they have those, uh, those bugs. And so what we have done is we have now partnered with the police, the National Police Service, so that now uh, we have given the police the charge sheet, what they can charge you on, and therefore now we have a bigger army to mm -hmm. deal with the, with, with the, with the polythene bag. And also, not only the polythene bag, but also burning. You know the burning also, mm -hmm. what was burned was mainly the polythene bags. Mm -hmm. And so if anybody is caught burning also, <coughs> they can also be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. Now, after 2017, we also uh, burned the single-use plastics in protected areas. Mm -hmm. Things like straws, single-use uh, plates, uh, these uh, uh, items that we use for culling food, yeah. uh, disposable containers, all of them were banned. You cannot use them in forests, in national mm -hmm. parks, and also in the beaches. It is not there. And after that ban, combined with the polythene bag, if you look at the data for waste that has been uh, collected during the ocean, uh, ocean cleanup day. Uh, the, our beaches are cleaner. We are collecting less and less uh, plastics from our beaches. Mm -hmm. And then after that, 2021, <coughs> we went ahead and also came up with the Sustainable Waste Management Policy, and we also have the Sustainable Waste Management Act of 2022. Now, what is important uh, about the two documents is that Kenya became the first country in the world to subject every synthetic product to extended producer responsibility. Mm -hmm. Meaning that anybody who brings, uh, who manufactures something in the factory or imports anything into the country, mm -hmm. then they are supposed to take care of their product until it is safely disposed. Mm -hmm. And uh, that has a lot of implication on how we are managing plastics. Mm -hmm. Because plastics is one of our synthetic items 
in the market. Mm -hmm. And so now, it is mandatory for everybody who is manufacturing pl pl plastics in Kenya, who is uh, importing anything with pl in plastics, they are supposed to take care of, of those items. Mm -hmm. So right now, we have companies that have been established, new ones, uh, to deal with all plastics. And uh, uh, now the people, uh, one of the requirements that uh, we have and we are enforcing on these companies is mm -hmm. that they pay for waste collection service. services. So if you have your plastic at home, mm -hmm. if you take it to the collection point, you'll be paid. Mm -hmm. you. And let me come to you, uh, Dr. Uh, Cyril. And what are some of the available and immediate, um, 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 uh, I'd say, payback that people would, would get when it comes to plastic uh, disposal, plastic eradication in regards to available treaties when it comes to managing plastics? Good. This is, um, this is uh, excellent questions. Um, I think that we can easily say that from what um, uh, Dr. You have just said on the implementation of the EPR, the semi producer responsibility uh, in Kenya, we have part of the solution. Mm -hmm. But the, the other good news is that we have this concept of circularity that, um, that UNEP and other UN agencies have been uh, fostering and pushing, which is to ensure that we are not managing waste as we used to do traditionally, mm -hmm. meaning from the product to the dump site. But that the end of life, what we can call the end of life of a product, it became a raw material, it became a new, mm -hmm. it became the entry point to the next one. So circularity. And we have been working um, extensively with a number of countries, including Kenya, to implement this principle of circularity. And you can see now that the number of recyclers and collecting and recycling of, uh, of plastic in, uh, in Kenya has, has, has tremendously um, I mean, increased. Recently, we have been uh, working with uh, KEPSA, the Kenya, uh, Kenya Association, Kenya Private Sector Private Alliance, sector. and uh, you could see that they have developed actually not only the action plan to implement the EPR, but they have also developed a lot of, um, a lot of guidance to encourage the private sector to handle the waste and to domesticate it and implement the EPR. So that is a part of the solution. The others, uh, a stream of solution is definitely the the reduce the reuse mm -hmm. and then to the, mm -hmm. the yeah to retail that speaks to what that speaks to the way we behave mm -hmm. with waste mm -hmm. so we should not just see the waste as a product to be dumped at the, at the dump site but also resources that mm -hmm. we can uh, sell that mm -hmm. can generate the income mm -hmm. but most importantly what we are encouraging people to do is really to to, to collect in the way that can be easily you know, mm -hmm. recycled. Mm -hmm. And to the country, and this is what we have been uh, uh, working with NEMA mm -hmm. and other institutions, mm -hmm. was to create an enabling environment to make this happen in a very smooth mm -hmm. and in a very transition mm -hmm. way. It's mean what? It's mean that um, the private sector has to come on board. It means that community leader has to come on board. It means that faith-based organization mm -hmm. has to come on board. Mm -hmm. But it means that also the state and non-state actors have really to talk continuously. So mm -hmm. definitely waste management is extremely important because it brings uh, green jobs and it brings other, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, other opportunity that will create an enabling environment for those who are dealing with waste, for mm -hmm. those who are dealing with a dump site mm -hmm. to, I mean, to come in. Mm -hmm. And the last one, if you allow me, mm -hmm. uh, we have we used to have very famous dump site in Kenya. We, we mentioned Dandora and others. But you will also recall at the same time that because of this example of uh, working together with private sector. Mm -hmm. Mombasa, for example, the Mombasa County was able to close the Kiparani dump site mm -hmm. that has been there for more than 40 mm -hmm. years, and Kisumu has also followed uh, follow the same. So the last point is to say that whether we are talking about the climate change, whether we are talking about the nature crisis, or we are talking about the pollution crisis, mm -hmm. all are interconnected. And waste management is actually one of the elements that if we take very good care of our waste, then we will start having a solution mm -hmm. to the triple planet. Uh, to the triple planet Let me come to you, Teddy, and briefly just give us some of uh, um, the existing solutions that um, have worked in Nairobi and can be replicated in other communities in Nairobi in two minutes. Thank you. Um, segregated source, mm -hmm. that is the key word and is the buzzword for me mm -hmm. uh, to all residents in Nairobi. The small kitchen, the a small corner, please place the items, the plastic mm -hmm. there. W you will always find, in fact, in the next, in the next three months, we'll be, f we'll be, we'll be communicating widely on how 
will have partnered with many other recyclers to collect that from you mm -hmm. and by eight earning green points and most importantly and um, uh, most importantly um uh we've got green jobs being created by for the cbos within the mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. so those solutions actually go a long way in seeing plastic as an item and not mm -hmm. just a waste material mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. thank you very much gentlemen unfortunately uh time is not on our side uh, that is Cyril Lazarus so here yeah, our uh, environment coordinator head Kenya country program UNEP Africa and Dr. Ayub Masharia director environment education and awareness at the Ministry of Education and Forestry and Teddy Obiero Alliance Nairobi West Plastics bringing sense to matters to do with plastics and what you and I can both do to make sure that the fight against plastic is actually won let us look at plastics as a commodity Dr. says you can take it back and get paid. Get uh, up on that and make sure that you become a champion on making the world a better place. My name is Dennis Aseto. Many thanks.